What's going on everybody? It's Mickey Indigo here with another show and you already know, please like and subscribe the video for your chance to win that PS5. What? Yes, that PS5. I'm giving away a PS5 to one of my lovely subscribers. All you have to do to enter to win right now is subscribe, okay? All right, with that all being said, <laughs> If you clicked here, you already know why you're here. Cobra Kai Season 3 just came out only a couple weeks ago. And I already made kind of a review that was spoiler free. So I'm going to dive a little bit into spoilers. So if you have not seen Cobra Kai yet, go, go away and come right back. Because we're about to dive into some spoilers. Unless you don't care. If you don't care, that's totally fine. We, let's go ahead and rock and roll. Now, the first thing I want to start off. First thing that I want to start off. The way that season two ended was master class, masterpiece, master everything. Honestly, what a cliffhanger. You know, sometimes I really don't like cliffhangers, especially cliffhangers like that. But with Miguel falling over the rail because he showed mercy, geez, man, these writers know exactly what they're doing, man. Look, look, there's a reason I bought this shirt. Okay, I didn't buy this shirt. It was given to me, thankfully. But I have to say, man, I'll rep Cobra Kai till I die. Because honestly, Karate Kid was like one of my favorite movies growing up. Man, that thing inspired me to do karate when I was young. Now that Cobra Kai is out, man, oh man, it's just taking me through a whirlwind of, uh, you know, nostalgia and, you know, all of the above, all of the above. So when we left Miguel, his back was done. He landed on his back because he showed mercy. And lo and behold, Johnny's son was the person who caused that. So when we, you know, come in from the beginning, we kind of take off right where we left off, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, you know, uh, Johnny's son, Robbie, he's on the run. And, you know, when he comes back, the karate kid, Daniel, um, Daniel, okay, he's, he's a karate man, right? Is that what we're going to call him now? <laughs> He talks to Daniel, um, and you know, Daniel did the right thing. In my opinion, he did the right thing. I mean, you're like, what do you mean? He snitched on him. I mean, yeah and no. I mean, what what is this kid going to do? Run the rest of his life? Let him just slap the charges on him and move on for the, you know, move on with the rest of his life. He can't be hiding forever. You know what I'm saying? That's just not a life to live. So, um, you know, they go, Daniel and Johnny go ahead, go together, um, and they go to this chop house. And, oh, my God, that was like the cheesiest scene out of the whole season when, uh, you know, they go into a chop house and all of a sudden they, they bust out fighting. I felt like I was watching t like Power Rangers or something. I don't even know. It was pretty crazy. So they, they end up fighting and then they end up fighting each other. And I don't know, man, it seemed a little forced. I, I get it. There needed to be conflict there. Um, but it did seem a little bit forced. Um, I thought they already went over that, uh, you know, but whatever. Fine. Um, fast forward, fast forward. You know, I love what they did with Hawk. Hawk was actually a really cool arc. And, you know, a lot of people saying that that sudden change at the end really fell out of character. In my opinion, it didn't. In my opinion, it didn't. You know, when things were going on progressively in season three, I saw it, like, in his face. I was like, is, is he, like, getting regret? But then the next scene, he's a dickhead again. And I'm like, nah, you don't. But, like, you, you could see slowly, like, really over time, like, the guy was getting, like, angrier and angrier. And, like, he was like, what am I doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it makes sense, man. When he broke his best friend's arm, and I forgot that guy's name, but you already know. When he broke his best friend's arm, man, that was dark, man. That hit a really dark place. And I thought it was really cool. So the way that uh, Sam, Daniel's daughter, was having like an anxiety and a uh, panic attack and i think that was actually a really cool way to not really rub it in your face you know what i'm saying i thought that was actually done really perfectly she had anxiety as soon as her rival came out um which her name escapes me as well <laughs> uh, what was it tori to, to, to i don't know whatever you guys know Anyway, I thought also the dream sequence between her and Sam was actually pretty good, too. I thought it was brutal, and I thought it was real. I was like, is she really going to drown her? This is absolutely nuts. If next season, if next season they go there and they actually murder one of these kids, like... <laughs> Yo, know, like, at this point, it would have to happen, right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you get more darkened than what you've got now? You know, uh, beats me. Um, and then, you know, of course, Allie comes back, you know, and 
look, man, I was expecting this to go the complete cliche route where she was going to be a love triangle. She was going to get into the way of, you know, uh, Johnny and Miguel's mom's relationship. But not nope, she was in and out. I was like, what? Bro, I just did not see that coming. I thought she was going to stick around for the long run. It looks like the way the last episode ended, she's pretty much done. You know, she said what she had to say. She kind of rekindled their relationship and, you know, made them notice, you know, there's actually a lot more in common that you guys have. Um, you know, little things here and there. The season was really good, um, especially <laughs> in the, the beginning of the part where they called Daniel the bully. I've been saying that for the long time. Daniel was, I don't know, man. Like, if you watch Karate Kid again... Watch it with a different perspective. I feel like Daniel could kind of be the bad guy. He could be considered the bad guy. He was stepping up on his girl. I know where they're bro broken up, but they definitely had history, and they were just kind of, un uh, you know, uh, unpacking their dirty laundry, so to speak. And then Daniel's like, hey, what's up? We're not going to get into Karate Kid. That's for another video. I'm just saying, I think that was pretty cool and slick of season three to call that out. Um, and then, of course, we reached basically the last episode the last episode where everything just blew up the uh you know the the, the cobra guy <laughs> oh man the eagle fang thing first of all uh to go on a side note that eagle fang thing oh horrendous but absolutely hilarious <laughs> but i'm gonna keep repping cobra kai but eagle fang man <laughs> But the last episode when cobra kai ends up at daniel larusso's um house you know, I just didn't see that coming. I was like, you look, season two, they went pretty big. I was expecting them to go really big in season three, and they did. They actually did deliver. Um, now, if you ask me what was better, them showing up at Daniel's house or the high school, I would probably say the high school fight was a little bit better just for the shock factor of it all. Because I guess when that happened, you didn't really expect it to go out like a gang war. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was absolutely bizarre. Like, it was nuts, man. It was nuts. Uh, but this one, it felt like there was less repercussions. It felt like there was less people getting hurt. Although, I did like the part with Miguel and his back. They were just, like, really going into the guy's back. And, you know, and, like, oh, man, you think Miguel's never, he, Miguel's never coming back. Miguel's never coming back. But lo and behold, man. I don't know what it was, but he came back and started whooping some butt. Um, so hopefully we're, we're already past that arc with Miguel recovering. Now he's, you know, back to his old self. I'm hoping. I mean, we all know real life usually ain't like that, but let's hope that's where <laughs> season four is going to go. Um, anyways, after that, um, I mean, what were the, the, the biggest changes from that fight, really, other than the fact that uh, Tori, right? I think her name is Tori. Uh, Tori and uh, Sam got over her anxiety with Tori and um, Hawk changed alliances with Daniel and Johnny. Um, other than that, I mean, it didn't really end with a, like a bang like like season two did. Um, so I thought it was kind of weird. They kept cutting back and forth between um, the dates they were having Johnny and uh, Daniel and Allie. Uh, and then going back to the fight. But I get it probably because, you know, the fight choreography, there's a lot that goes into that. So they have to break it up. They can't just show the whole fight. The whole fight's probably like four or five minutes worth of footage. So they really needed to drag it out. Um, but to be honest, uh, what caught me off guard was that there was actually another fight after that. You know, because when they find out, oh, shoot, Cobra Kai came to my house. What? You know, uh, Johnny comes to confront, you know, OG Cobra Kai over here. <laughs> and that fight was actually really brutal it was really epic there was almost murder and i feel like i feel like the show's building up to that i really do i feel like m maybe in the next season someone's gonna die like someone's gonna get murdered like they they really keep like hinting towards that direction and i really hope it does go in that direction you're like whoa whoa that's dark exactly exactly because that's life and things are getting darker and you know no man people are wild cards you can't predict people so um here's to hoping it gets that dark or at least almost dying but they already did that with see the end of season two so it's like nah man maybe this time the person needs to die whoever it is and it has to be a character we really like oh man so uh, you know daniel sensei uh i mean not daniel johnny sensei and johnny start fighting and then you know robbie comes into the mix johnny throws robbie into a wall robbie got knocked out bro that was so soft robbie 
get out of here, Robbie. Now he's probably going to be the big baddie for next season. But to be honest, that was a really clever twist. I did not see Robbie being there and, and being the one to fight. That was brutal. I liked how, you know, Johnny uh, was going to get that knife or whatever you call that to stab that dude. And then Robbie's like, what are you doing, bro? And then all of a sudden his instructor's like, nah, I'm good, bro. And then, you know, <laughs> Daniel LaRusso comes into the rescue. He does that whole uh, thing that he learns from his friend in Okinawa. <laughs> I guess it was his formal rival. Um, but that was an amazing scene. Daniel going to Okinawa was amazing. What a blast from the past, man. I enjoyed so much of this season. The acting is getting so much better. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm glad that they're coming back to a tournament setting. That's really cool. I'm curious to know if it really is the final season. Season four is the last one. It might be, might not be, because they didn't formally announce it would be. Um, but I'm hearing uh, through the grapevine that there might be more. And I like the ending, the ending reveal. Like I said in the, in the first review, guys, of season three, I was saying, if you did not watch karate kid man it makes it that much better because when he he's talking to that uh when uh jeez man king cobra i'm gonna call him king cobra <laughs> when king cobra is actually you know talking to his friend that's that dude from part three silva terry silva um so and you know they show all those corny flashbacks but i understand why they did that um, but you know, I'm excited. Uh, next season is going to have Terry. That's insane. I wonder if they're going to have that other dude, uh, who did karate as well. That, that dude was a monster in karate kid three. I'm sure it'll bring like crazy, crazy drama. I could only imagine, man. Cause like things got really heated in, in karate kid three, like things. <laughs> like, and if there's adults now, man, I feel like it could go deeper, man, and I could go darker. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. Hey, guys, that's all I have. If you're going to ask me if it's as good as season two, yes, it's as good. If you're going to ask me if it's better, I'm not going to say it's better. To be honest, they're pretty much on par with each other. I, I gave last season like a pretty much and I don't, I don't like giving numbers but with this i'll give a number i gave an eight out of ten and this one i get the same thing eight out of ten i hope the next season you know it floors us and impresses us even more i personally hope you know uh, netflix starts releasing uh week by week because i feel like these shows gain so much momentum and then when they're released everyone forgets about them whereas the mandalorian you know it's 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 every month or well, i guess it's every week uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like the talk stays for months. So uh, Netflix, you need to uh, you need to step up your game. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, advertisements as well. I was pretty shameless, uh, but it's all good. As long as I'm not seeing commercials, I'm not really that angry. But hey, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. W what's the best season? Is it season one? Is it season two? Is it season three? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win that PS5, and I love you all, and as always, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Your continued support will keep this show going.